morning and welcome to my kitchen again I hope you're watching me for the umpteenth time not just the first time but if it's just the first time then welcome and welcome to my kitchen and um, today I've just grabbed out a load of stuff from my fridge and I was going to make um, a paella but I haven't got any paella rice so I'm going to make a risotto so I do have some risotto rice. So I've got my risotto rice. I have got some oil, some chickpeas, some salmon fillets, which are frozen, some chorizo sausage, um, hot paprika, an onion, pepper and pink salt. Some spinach, garlic, mushrooms, lemons, a yellow pepper, and oopsie daisy, that's just split. Some mange too, girl oh boy. Oh, and some red and green chilies. So, oh, and two vegetable stock cubes. And a kettle of water and I've also got some prawns right so what am I going to do to start with to start with I've got a frying pan here and I'm going to put my oil in my frying pan and I'm going to start cooking my salmon in my frying pan let's get that on There we go. You can see that. You see that? Yeah. And I got this salmon. I can't remember how much I paid for it. Um, I think it was three ninety nine, something like that. And you get two bits. They're skinless and boneless. No idea where they're from. Here I go. I'm going to tell you where they're from. I don't even know where they're from, and it probably is not even going to tell me where they're blooming from. Um. Germany for German well it is Lidl's so we've got some German salmon I'm going to open them up with my very blunt scissors and I'm going to pop each fillet in the pan Now, some people are a little bit scared of risotto, but to be honest, do you know, it's the simplest thing to make. It really, really is. As long as you don't make it too dry, you want your risotto to be moist. There's nothing wrong, there's nothing worse than a dry risotto. It needs to be nice and moist, but it doesn't want to be um, sloppy either. You know, you need to get that consistency right. Let's get my tongs. There we go. I'm just going to cover that slightly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some lemon. Can't see what I'm doing, can you, up there? It's too darn eye. Hang on. Put it down a bit. Is that better? Yeah. It's better, isn't it? Let's get a knife. And I'm just going to take off the skin of some lemon. I'm not try, what I'm trying to do is not get the, the white, too much white bit. And then I'm just going to finally slice that. You still can't see what I'm doing, can you? Lordy, lordy. It'll be on the floor in a minute. How's that? There we go. I'm just slicing it like so. And that's just going to create a nice little lemony scent and flavour, I hope. Pop it in there. I'm going to cut my lemon in half. And I'm just 
going to sprinkle a little squeeze, half a lemon in there. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Take out the pip I just put in there. There we go. And I'm just going to turn it over. Oh, come on. There we go. That's it. I'll leave that for a little bit. So, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to slice up about half a carrot and I'm going to cut it quite small into little dice um, because I don't want great big chunks of carrot in there I just want them to be quite quite small so that sort of size so I'll get on with that and I'll come back to you in a minute I'm just going to add a little bit of water to my salmon so that it's doing a bit of a poaching with the lid on. Alright. Okay, so while you've been gone, I have made up a great big jug of um, vegetable stock and I've got 800 mils a vegetable stock in there and I'm just giving it a bit of a stir around in boiling water and I've also chopped up my mange to my peppers my onion carrot yellow pepper and that much from there to there of chorizo and I've given that a bit of a chop as well and I've got four cloves of garlic so I've got my wok, my salmon is now finished cooking and I've got that sat to one side in there. I'm going to leave the lid on that and I'm going to oil my wok. I like to make risotto in a wok because there's a lot of fluid going in there. Um, you need a nice big pan to cook it in. So get that on high. And then what we're going to do is put our risotto rice straight in. This is how I make my risotto. So, you know, I'm not saying it's the correct way, but this is how I make it. So I'm going to put in, I've got that much in the packet, and I'm going to put about half of that quantity into my pan. There we go, and I'm left with that. So hopefully, I'm just going to actually, I'm always a bit worried that I'm not having enough. I'm going to put a little bit more in, because this is going to be for tomorrow as well. So I'm going to just give my grains a little spritz on top, so they've all got a nice little oily coating. And then I'm going to mix them around my pan. And I'm going to add in my onion to that mix and my carrots. So I've got a bit mixed in with everything else. There we go. And I'm going to put in also my chorizo because the chorizo has oil in it and that will release the oil into the rice at this stage. So I'm just going to, oh god, make a mess. I'm just going to give that a bit of a stir around and get all those little grains covered in the oil. So that's what it looks like inside. And just keep stirring it all around and then what I'm going to do is slowly add some stock
I might even have to use more than that. Now this is going to take about 30 to 40 minutes and you will need to keep an eye on it and keep stirring it. Now it goes against the grain everything you do with normal rice because normal rice you cover it and leave it. Um, if you keep stirring it it will go stodgy and horrible. It releases all the starch and goes horrid. Um, but with risotto you want to stir it because you want to encourage that creaminess to come out of those grains. So I'm just getting it to the right consistency to start with. There we go. And then once you've got enough in there for it to start cooking, turn it down. You don't want it too high. Um, I will then start adding all my other little bits and pieces. And then it's a case of just stirring it and waiting until that rice is all lovely and cooked. So, I'm show you. that's the consistency. It's still quite a bit sloppy, but it's not soaking. You know what I mean? There's not loads and loads and loads of fluid in there, is there? So, I'm going to start adding the rest of my vegetables. a lot of veg. And I'm going to put my um, garlic in. Oh, where's that? thing the garlic sits in. Oh, freaking heck. No, that's gone. Unless it's in here. Might be in here. Lordy, lordy. That's gone. Oh well. Can't use that then. Pain in bum. Right, let's give this a bit of a stir. Add a bit more of our stock. And it is really surprising how much stock it will take. You'll be surprised. If it's the first time you've made risotto, you will be surprised at how much it will take. So that's what it's looking like at the moment. We've got a long way to go yet. So I'm going to prepare this garlic by hand and then I'll come back to you. Right, so I've done my bit of garlic, which is here, and I'm just going to pop that in. And I've also got some chickpeas and I'm going to drain the juice from the chickpeas into my vegetable stock because that's good, good juice and I've used about three quarters of a tin of the chickpeas. I'm going to add a little bit of stock in there. Now I know I've got some uh, chorizo, but there's not an awful lot of chorizo in there. So what I'm going to do is add some paprika. And I've got some spicy paprika. Hot paprika. So I'm just going to sprinkle a good old spoon of that in. And I will taste it a bit later. If I need any more then I'll add it. I'm going to put some seasoning in there. Pepper. 
and I've got some uh, tricolour quinoa which I'm going to put in as well and that will expand in the vegetable stock put a little bit more in I'll give you a little show in a minute Now, if I had some saffron, I would put that in there um, because I quite like um, the rice to go that sort of yellowy colour. But I don't have any saffron. <laughs> so, that's what it's looking like at the moment. You know when this is cooked, when you can squeeze it between your fingers. At the moment, I can't. Not particularly. It's hard. So I know that rice isn't ready. I am going to turn it up a little bit more because I've got a lot of stuff in there. I'm going to turn it up slightly, get it going a bit more. And then I've got my chilli. And I'm just going to use a, a bit of green chilli. I'm going to take out the pips because although Jason loves chilli really hot, I'm not a lover. And I don't want to, for me, I don't want to ruin... Um, a good risotto um, by making it too spicy and then I can't eat it so I'm just going to put a little bit of green pepper just to give it a bit of um, a bit of bite really rather than you know any real hot sweating temperature that's not what I'm looking for I mean when we go for an Indian Jason has a vindaloo so that just tells you how hot he likes things whereas you know I'm a bit of a biryani girl <laughs> so that's going in now that's pretty much all my bits and pieces um, in and all I've got to do now is just keep giving it a gentle stir around in my pan and there is going to be plenty here for tonight and for tomorrow's lunch um, or for you know a, a hungry family of four you'd feed them well on this because I've still got don't forget my salmon and my prawns to go in but you can put whatever you like in you can put ham chicken pork fish you know you do whatever you want or just just a vegetable one you know it doesn't have to have meat in it you can have just a vegetable one if you want to so I haven't put in this actually I will put some spinach in a bit later I don't want to put it in just yet I want to put it in because it doesn't take long to cook spinach so I just want to wilt back down at the last minute so I shall keep stirring and I shall come back to you when it's a little bit more cooked I just want to say I've just filleted my fish and I have found one two three four five six seven eight nine ten bones in that two pieces of fish there they are now I think that's quite a lot in two bits of fish I don't know do you and some of them are quite big I'm inclined to write back to the company and say this is supposed to be skinless and boneless salmon but they've covered themselves a little bit here because they've put Produced in Germany, although every care has been taken to remove bones, some small pieces may remain. Would you say that's small pieces? I don't know. I suppose they've covered themselves by it there, really, haven't they? So, um, yeah, I've got to put up with it. But all I'm saying is, just be a bit careful. <laughs> if, you, if you buy that, it does have bones in it. Well, you may think it's not. Right, so, I'm still here, stirring me risotto, it's going well, it's soaked up a lot of juice, that's all gone, that jug, that's now empty, and I had the little bit from the chickpeas as well, and I'm just going to check the rice. So, let's get a plate. So when you get your risotto, and you 
put it on your plate like so you want it to be a little bit more wetter than that that is too dry it needs to be a little bit wetter on your plate so I'm going to add a little bit more stock to that and cook it for a little bit longer but we are nearly there I think I'm just going to try it I just want to get the consistency right nice very nice mm. that rice is cooked now when I squish it between my fingers it's it's very soft and pliable and it tastes cooked which is the best way of toasting <laughs> don't you think right so I'm now going to stick in some spinach a little bit, let that wilt in, I'm going to add in my prawns, and they won't take too long at all. They want to go nice and pink when you know they're ready. A little bit more stock. They're looking like that. Can you see? And then I'm just going to add in our salmon. Do you know, I think this would probably feed six people easy. I'm going to pop that back. I know I had a little mouthful off it, but it is only for me and, it's only for me and Jason. Right, so I'm going to give this a good season of salt. And a squeeze of lemon. And gently mix that in. And we are nearly good to go. Our prawns are a bit translucent. They're starting to go pink. Don't leave them in too long because they will go rubbery. Is that it worse than rubbery prawns? Oh, horrible. Don't overcook your prawns because you can. Don't undercook them either. <laughs> They're going to make you poorly. They want to be pink. A nice pink. So mine are going a nice pink look. Okay. I mean, they're never going to go as pink as the salmon when you compare the two there side by side. But you can see they are they are they have gone a nicer pink. So I've got a nice consistency, I think, on my paella, a paella risotto. switch it off and I'm going to plate it up I'm going to give a nice wedge oh, wrong way, of lemon and I've got some 
baby leaf and rocket just add a little bit of that on the side and then quickly I'm just going to make up a little yogurt dressing So, two dessert spoons of natural yoghurt, squeeze a lemon, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and some paprika mix that round give it a taste mm -mm -mm. nice drizzle over like so and then get our risotto Can you see that consistency? It's not dry. It's a nice, it's wet, but it's not running wet. Put a few prawns in there. there we have it a lovely prawn and salmon chickpea risotto so I'll give it a little try and as you can see I've got shed loads I could feed the whole blooming street with it right, so let's have a taste test so I'll get some salmon Pop a prawn on top. Mm. Just how it should be. Creamy, warm, soft with the bite from the um, the vegetables. They're still sort of al dente. Um, but you've got the creaminess of the uh, risotto rice. And you've got your spinach in there and the beautiful fish. Really tasty, really nice, and you've just got that hint. And it is just a hint, excuse me, <laughs> of um, heat from the pepper. And then you've got um, the warmth from the chorizo running through it as well. Giving it that Spanish feel. Beautiful. Very, very nice. I'm very pleased with that. Um, I hope you'll give it a go and comment below. It is really, really tasty. And like I say, you don't have to do salmon or prawn. But they are things that you can just grab out your freezer. And it will take you an hour probably to rustle this up. Um, so it's not the quickest dish because you have to cook it for a good 40 minutes. But... I'll tell you what, it'll be one of the tastiest dishes that you ever produce. And you'll get a lot of people remarking on your risotto. Make a risotto. Go on, when are you going to make that risotto again? You will. People will love it. And it's inexpensive, which is great. So give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Um, subscribe, tell your friends. And I'll see you again in my kitchen. See you soon. Bye-bye.